Thank you so much uh, for being here for this presentation, which will be about the Collabora Office Android app and what is inside. So, but before we can see it and uh, uh, I can show it the details of that, let me first get into the history. Because as you can see, like it's a quite a lot of history in this. Like the work on this started more or less in 2011, and like the first thing with LibreOffice, because you can imagine like it's a huge code base, and getting it to Android meant like first to get something on the screen, uh, which was pioneered by Michael and uh, Tor. Uh, so thank you for starting this at all, and it was like incredible amount of, uh, of effort that, that was needed for this. Uh, because uh, like for example, the linker uh, just allowed like 96 libraries to be uh, loaded at the same time. And of course like uh, LibreOffice uh, itself had like several hundred and it used some component, uh, component stuff so that like it was all loaded on demand. And yeah, like, you know, all this had to be overcome to to the state that actually like something got on the screen. The debugging of this was a nightmare, like the, uh, the stuff was uh, uh, not ready for the native debugging uh, at that time at all, like you had to upload something to the, uh, to the device, uh, put some weights into the startup uh, procedure and you know all these, these nightmares. But they succeeded, so they've got something on the screen uh, which like you can see tablet inside there was the screen of LibreOffice but of course like this is not what you expect from the uh, from the mobile app so like it was unusable in this state but it was possible so the next step was like trying to get some whole uh, whole screens host pages on the screen uh, which seemed like a good approach at the time uh, so it got it to the application that like had some list of screen uh, list, list of um, uh, list of do uh, document pages and you were able to switch uh, in this but scrolling the document was like impossible because like you know you were able only to switch it like slides so the next step here was to use actually uh, the LibreOffice kit so LibreOffice kit um, that, uh, that came uh, from the need of the uh, mobile and web applications is actually uh, some kind of API for LibreOffice uh, that, that allows you uh, to simply access uh, the functionality of LibreOffice uh, from, uh, from C uh, or C++. And it allows you to uh, draw parts of the document into tiles. So like you split the entire documents into like 256 to 256 pixels tiles. And then like you can request them. You can request them like uh, by absolute coordinate. So like uh, the theory is that like when you just want to fetch something from the document, uh, you say, okay, well, I need it from over here, over there. And uh, then you have some like composition that like composes that into something that looks like the document, which was great. Um, it it functioned uh, nicely, and uh, uh, like later it was extended to actually like uh, that the editing worked too. Um, it meant that like uh, all the stuff had to be had to be updated so that like uh, when the user actually types something into the uh, into the document, uh, like that uh, the uh, part that where the user actually typed uh, is invalidated and new tasks are actually fetched uh, for, this, uh, for this area, uh, which was done by, by Miklos. So this is what we had in 2015. Um, the problem of this was that, oh, didn't I skip something? I did. Yeah, the important part of this was that uh, that actually uh, like the the compositing of these tiles into uh, to form something like the document uh, was uh, done in Java. Uh, we have reused code, or Tomasz has reused code uh, for this from Mozilla, uh, which had uh, this Fennec uh, prototype at that time, and uh, um, so. 
it kind of worked, uh, but the problem was that like it diverged uh, from uh, what the code was doing uh, for the web. So of course the LibreOffice Kit API was extended over time, uh, so that uh, so that like more and more features were added there, uh, so that like you were able to type uh, concurrently um, uh, in the web browser. Uh, and also like uh, have their more functionality exposed like through the dialogues and everything but like uh, maintaining these two code bases was uh, was like uh, very inconvenient like you would have to to be on par with the features like that were developed for the web uh, you would have to like do it just once again for the uh, for the uh, in java for the for the mobile part as well and uh, so the idea uh, that uh, that uh, Thor was uh, was implementing for the iOS was actually like do everything um, uh, like uh, in a web browser even in the app. So basically, uh, in the background, have the LibreOffice and LibreOffice Kit, and then uh, like have uh, have a full screen web view uh, where you are uh, running the JavaScript uh, that is like normally. Uh, normally used on the in the web version, but use that uh, use that on the on the actual device as well with all the cross compiled code uh, in the in the background and uh, and all these things. And it worked for the iOS. Uh, so at some stage, like uh, I tried to to do it for Android as well. And yeah, it had some problems as well, of course. <laughs> so. Uh, first of all, uh, the old WSD has to be ported uh, uh, to Android. Uh, like, uh, luckily, it was not that hard because, like, it was pioneered for iOS uh, as well. It was using the same uh, native code uh, that ha that uh, like is uh, compiled for the old uh, like uh, Fennec-based uh, um, app uh, that uh, that uh, is written like uh, entirely in Java. And uh, and uh, but uh, there were things that uh, that uh, had to be done done a bit differently. So um, first of all, uh, like uh, I wanted uh, this to be built in Android Studio, uh, so that like uh, the the debugging is easier, and uh, like uh, it is more standard for like anybody who comes from the Android world and uh, and sees this for the first time. So in the in the online Git uh, where the like web web version uh, lives, uh, I've created the the Android sub there and uh, like introduced the appropriate configuration options and and everything. Uh, then uh, then uh, edit uh, the 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 stuff that like had to be built natively. Uh, but for that, I've created it in CMake so that uh, so that like Android Studio actually understands this and and it is possible to build it uh, directly from there. Um, luckily, uh, the debugging part of this worked pretty well. Uh, so now, like you can debug this uh, completely, like directly from the Android Studio. You can set the breakpoints even for the native part, and and all these things uh, work nicely. If you want to know the details, like how to set it up. Uh, for this, just read the Android slash readme. Uh, it is described there. And uh, yes, so the minimal app was created. Uh, so uh, like the web view over the entire screen and some kind of communication between the web view that is there and between the native, uh, native uh, part that is like behind the scenes. Um, so um, we had to... Um, we had to uh, like introduce like two ways of communication. So one is from uh, from JavaScript to native, and uh, uh, that is like uh, reasonably easy on Android. Like when you have the web view, you just uh, add uh, JavaScript interface, and then you can you can run it easily, uh, like uh, like this uh, low ws uh, low message handler uh, dot post mobile message, and like you get it uh, from the uh, from the uh, JavaScript to native, but uh, for the native to JavaScript, like it's uh, a bit hackish uh, because like you have to use this JavaScript uh, prefix uh, that actually runs uh, like one JavaScript function. So basically, like you encode your entire message um, 
uh, which can be quite large, like it can be the entire, uh, the entire tile and uh, like encapsulate it uh, that way and, uh, and you, you will, it will be called in, in JavaScript and then like processed by the, by the online part uh, actually itself. I was concerned about like how this is going to be performing, but it is not that bad. Like it is not showing that much in the profile. So it's not, not terrible. Um, then, uh, like when this minimal app was was created, like lots of functionality has to be had to be ported from the from the old app that we had, uh, because like it had the it had the shell that showed like uh, what are the uh, what are the files on the uh, on the device. Um, it uh, uh, had to be done so that like uh, there are some assets that uh, that come with the uh, with the native part that like have to be present. Uh, on the device so that like things work. Uh, some of these assets have to be some kind of unpacked so that like uh, they behave like real normal files uh, on the device because like we de uh, depend on many, uh, many uh, like uh, third party um, uh, projects like font config and these things and uh, lots of these have some configurations uh, that just have to be like uh, read directly from the disk. So. Uh, so, like, it had to. It, they cannot be as assets because assets are very special on Android. So, so like, they have to be copied first uh, at the first start and then can be used later. Um, then uh, some uh, like important things like uh, displaying the license and the notice file, and of course settings, uh, so that like you can you can, can tweak the configuration of the of the thing. Uh, then uh, we had a summer of code student uh, uh, during this summer or the last summer, uh, Kai Shusahu, who added lots of things uh, that are expected on the on the Android device. So uh, some print support, slideshow support, which exports the uh, the, the slideshow into SVG and shows it as a full screen on the device. Um, Inserting images again, like you have to uh, like uh, start a separate activity uh, that uh, that allows you to to choose the file and and uh, provide it back to the document so that it is inserted. Lots of useful stuff, and of course lots of bug fixing. So one of the thing that uh, that was a huge challenge was uh, actually life cycle of the thing because uh, because uh, like the Android life cycle. Um, goes through like many steps and it is a bit unclear like in what state uh, like how the how the native uh, part uh, is supposed to behave like when you are actually uh, supposed to uh, to tear it down when you are supposed to uh, to leave it like in the background because like you know that that you will return to some state very uh, very soon and stuff like that so uh, so, like, we had lots of crashes there. Uh, luckily, it, it seems to be in some reasonable, uh, reasonable shape just now. Then, <coughs> uh, then it was uh, necessary to uh, to debug uh, some pieces like the startup time. Um, it turned out that like uh, we were starting about a minute just because the font config uh, was parsing the huge note of fonts that are on the device and. Uh, uh, and so, like, we had to overtake it some way and fix other crashes at some other stuff. And then uh, we tried to publish in Google Play, but just at the time, like, when we were ready, all was nicely done, uh, Google Play, uh, like, uh, came up with a new policy, and that was that when you have a native app in the App Store, it has to have 64-bit version as well. And so far, like everything was 32 bit. So uh, we had to make the low WSD compilable uh, on 64 bit, uh, which needed a POCO that, that, we, uh, that we actually use uh, as um, like the main dependency for the online itself. Um, we had to, had to port it to 64 bit. Luckily, like uh, it needed just a few patches, but still it was a bit annoying. Uh, then uh, deliver of his core itself uh, again like it is ported to arm 64 for a long time but uh, on android it behaved a bit differently uh, so some things uh, uh, were 
like necessary to be fixed in the bridges, which which is the like very low level part of this, uh, so that first it compiles it all on Android, and then uh, that it runs because uh, like the exceptions didn't work there, so we had to do some hacks that were uh, like already done for iOS, but like uh, not used in generally, so so it had to be changed there. And of course, uh, the online build now had to count on actually having two trees uh, uh, of the uh, of the compiled native stuff. Uh, so one was the 32-bit, uh, the other 64-bit, and create some Android app bundle uh, that is then uploaded to the Google Play. And uh, Google Play, like when it serves to the uh, to the devices, uh, like repacks that uh, into the actual APKs. And uh, and then like uh, the the users are actually served either with the 64-bit uh, version or with the 32-bit version according to their device. So finally we've got it there, and uh, we've got through several iterations since then. Uh, so again, like more pieces from the old app uh, were ported. Uh, so for example, support for SD cards. Uh, or for cloud storage, uh, currently Nextcloud is supported. Uh, hope to have more in the future. Uh, then uh, many improvements in inter interaction, and the biggest thing uh, that was there was the uh, was the mobile wizard. Uh, we call it this way because we don't have a better name, but it's basically the uh, the stuff that you see see down there. So some details uh, in in there. So uh, thanks. To Kylon to, for some uh, design device uh, advice here, uh, we were able to actually actually add some dumping uh, of the uh, of the content of the widgets uh, that are uh, that are in the dialogues or in the sidebars. Uh, so we are able to dump it as uh, as JSON and transfer it to the uh, to the JavaScript part, and uh, based on that. Uh, like we are able to to display the information that is either in the dialogues or in the sidebar, some more convenient way uh, for the users. Uh, so, uh, like what what you see in the picture is the sidebar that you would see normally in LibreOffice, but like presented in uh, in, in JavaScript, rendered in JavaScript. So it, it works nicely. You have all the things like uh, uh, smooth scrolling and. Uh, and uh, interactions and all these things. So, if it works, I can hopefully show you some demo. Yeah. So this is like what you get when you start it on the uh, on the on the device. Some editing. Yes, was started. Yeah. Okay. You can select something. If you are more lucky than me with my fingers, then you will do it on the first attempt. Change some properties. You can insert some chart here. Uh, sorry, chart, no chart, but table. So then you, you can see the, the, the mobile wizard in action here, like change the, the columns and rows. You can type something into the, into the table. And if it doesn't fit, uh, you can resize the table so that it is more convenient. Like there are the special handles done for this, uh, for all this editing. Yeah, more scrolling, <laughs> and that's it. I think we are at the end. Okay, so some future steps uh, will be more to do, of course, more profile and optimizing. Uh, but at the moment, like the most uh, uh, most terrible problems, I think, are are sorted out. But still, of course, like uh, more to do as usual. Uh, at the moment, uh, uh, from time to time, you could see that some document just doesn't doesn't load. But I fixed that yesterday, so this is all. 
Um, basically, what was uh, going on is that some people with some uh, like uh, a bit strange uh, low chaos setting uh, for their lip uh, lip uh, length tag uh, was not finding the data. Uh, so and it it just uh, like then didn't load and presented some like file not found uh, found uh, dialog box. Uh, update the document creation mode. So currently, we just like copy uh, the document from some temporary state into the new document and create from that. Uh, like we would like to to use some real templates here uh, for the for the document creation, which is possible, uh, but not finished. Of course, lots of paper cuts here and there. Uh, for example, the most visible at the moment is smooth scrolling. Uh, so like uh, the inertia, so that like when you uh, move uh, with the finger quickly, that like it goes on, and before it reaches somewhere something. And yeah, that's it. I, I think so. If you want to get involved, uh, you are most welcome. Uh, it is uh, not that hard to set up. Um, unfortunately, like you first have to uh, cross compile the, the LibreOffice tree, uh, but then the rest is uh, like reasonably easy, reasonably familiar. Uh, to, to people who have uh, who has done have done some some Android development, and many thanks to people who uh, who contributed directly to the Android port, but of course like uh, lots of other people uh, have uh, contributed to the uh, to the uh, online uh, collabora did most of the work in the online there. So uh, so thank you so much. So that's it. Any questions, please? Yes. What's your approach to synchronize uh, releases between online and Android release? How do you keep up with it? Mm. It just creates new Google Play release once online. Yeah. I uh, yeah. So so at the moment, like the the Google Play releases are a bit more frequent than the the releases on the normal of, uh, online. Uh, because like uh, we have uh, some additional fixes that are like directly in the Android part um, that are not not general, but of course like because all this code uh, code is shared. Uh, so if uh, we improve something for the Android uh, and uh, it is in the JavaScript part, it will improve the uh, the, uh, the experience even for people who are using the web version. Uh, the web version normally like f from the but on the mobile device. Uh, so, like they they will see lots of uh, these things there uh, improved as well, but like currently, I think it is more often than than the normal normal online releases or the code. Maybe it is like similar as the code, and from time to time there's like one release in between, so something like that. Like in the recent past, it was like every two two weeks. Sorry? And with iOS as well. iOS. So iOS is a bit different uh, in the releases because uh, uh, like uh, in the test flight, uh, we update it uh, frequently. But uh, the normal app uh, is now based on the 4.0 still. And uh, uh, we still have to update some stuff uh, so that like we can, uh, we can like base it on 4.2. So, like the official release of the iOS app uh, will update uh, a bit later, uh, but currently, like if you are the test flight user, uh, you will see like similar pace of the updates. Thank you for the question. <laughs> any other question? Yes, please. I imagine there's no video support on any of the mobile devices yet. Um, uh, no. Video support. No video support. I don't think there is. Okay, any other question? Yes. Yeah. 
Oh. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Then thank you so much.